My name is Pete Wagner. They call me Whiskey Pete. I'm the Whiskey Ambassador at Brown Foreman for the state of Ohio. We have a lot of fun for you today. Today we're going to sample through Gentleman Jack, Jack Daniels Single Barrel, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, and Single Barrel Rye. We're going to talk about what's the difference between a Tennessee whiskey and a bourbon. We're also going to talk about how to taste and smell whiskeys in a proper taste test. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Cheers. So you can't talk about Jack Daniels without talking about the man himself. So here is the legend of Jack Daniels. Now, you have to realize I just said the legend of Jack Daniels. You see, there was a fire in a courthouse in Lynchburg years ago that burned up all the records of Jack Daniels. So everything that you're about to hear was passed down by word of mouth for a generation. It starts you out the gate nice and easy. Just to prove that it's the legend of Jack Daniels. According to the legend, first off, his name wasn't even Jack. His name was Jasper. Jasper Newton Daniels was born in 1850, and his mother died in 1849. Interesting, right? So, yes. Now, there is a book called Blood and Whiskey, The Time and Life of Jack Daniels that investigates a little deeper, and it turns out his mother died shortly after he was born from complications from the birth. So, Jack uh, only grew up to be five foot two, had a size four shoe, was the tenth out of 13 children. Think about that, 13 mouths to feed in rural Tennessee. Things get a little sparse at the time, and believe it or not, old Jasper moves out of the house at the age of uh, nine years old. Moves in with a gentleman named Dan Call. Dan Call, during the daytime, was a Lutheran minister, would preach to his congregation, and at night would go down uh, to the creek and uh, make whiskey. Well, now you see, Dan's wife was part of the temperance movement. Temperance movement started in Westerville, Ohio, and eventually expanded throughout, and it's uh, what led to prohibition. Dan's wife didn't quite much like alcohol. She was part of a group that felt that that spirit you were consuming was an evil spirit. And they weren't afraid to exercise you of that spirit. She looked at old Dan, who's making whiskey, and she said, Dan, I hope that uh, still is warm at night because that's where you're sleeping. <laughs> like any smart man staring at an angry wife, he sides with her and sells that skull to Jasper at the age of 13 years old. Not only that, but uh, just a few years later, Jack realizes the government's leaning on all the local distillers, and he decides to register a still with the United States government, making Jack Daniels the very first registered distiller in the United States by a 16-year-old boy. So you go to the liquor store, and you see a wide variety of Jack Daniels represented there. Would you believe me if I told you that the vast majority of that is actually the same juice? It's all 80% corn, 12% barley, and the rest is rye. So what's the difference between them? This is where science meets magic. Let's talk about Jack Daniels, the product. 80% corn, 12% barley, the rest is rye. Jack Daniels is a Tennessee whiskey. What does that mean? That means it follows all the same rules of being a bourbon, it just takes one extra step, and that's charcoal mellowing. To be a Tennessee whiskey, that has to be made in the United States, stored in new charred oak barrels, at least 51% corn. You can only add spring water to it. It has to come off a still at under 160 proof, into a barrel at under 125, and into a bottle at 80 proof or higher. There is no age statement to be a Tennessee whiskey. It has to be made in Tennessee. To be a straight Tennessee whiskey, it's at least two years. If it's under four years, it has to be on the label. And then there's the charcoal mellowing. Every drop of Jack Daniels is dripped through 10 feet of charcoal, 10 feet of charred sugar maple. It takes uh, approximately a week to get from the top to the bottom, drop by drop. Now you see what happens here is as that whiskey filters through that charcoal, as it drips through that charcoal, there are bitter notes that are found in the oils and the husks of the grain. And as it drips through, those oils will find their way into that charcoal and eventually encapsulate it and get left behind, creating a more mellow profile. And that's what we call charcoal mellowing. Technically, 
Jack Daniels could still be labeled a bourbon, but because of its heritage of being uh, produced in Tennessee and use of charcoal mellowing, Jack Daniels prefers to be titled as a Tennessee whiskey. So what's the difference between Gentleman Jack, Jack Daniels, Jack Single Barrel? For those, you have to look to the barrel house. See, our barrel houses are a lot like your house if you had no power. Think about this. With no power, in the winter, you go down in the basement, it's a little bit warmer. It's insulated, you have the house on top of it. And you go up into the attic, and it's going to be cold. In the summer, you go in the basement, it's going to be a little bit cooler. You've got the insulation around it. You go up in the attic, it's going to be hot, sun shining down, radiant heat. Point being, less of a temperature fluctuation, more of a temperature fluctuation. Gentleman Jack is a marriage of barrels from that bottom floor in the barrel house. That means that it's only going to soak a third of the way into that barrel. Jack Daniels, Black Label, is a marriage of barrels from every floor in the barrel house. And then Jack Daniels, Single Barrel, that's exactly that. It's one barrel, top floor in the barrel house, huge temperature extremes. Lighter, softer, more mellow, full-bodied, and intense. In 1988, Brown Foreman and Jack Daniels Distilleries introduced Gentleman Jack. What is Gentleman Jack? Gentleman Jack is a lighter, softer expression of Jack Daniels. Still 80% corn, 12% barley, the rest rye. Gentleman Jack has a couple extra features to it. Where all Jack Daniels is mellowed through 10 feet of charcoal before it goes into a barrel, Gentleman Jack will actually force it through four extra feet after it comes out of the barrel, creating a softer profile, cutting the sharp notes from the barrel itself. Gentleman Jack is also a marriage of barrels from the bottom floor in the barrel house. Brown Foreman, the company I work for, is the last American-owned liquor company. It's a family-owned liquor company, and we are the only whiskey company that makes their own barrels. All of our barrels are first toasted using ultraviolet heat, it's a baking process where we caramelize all the natural sugars that are found in the barrel. And then they're charred. That's that fire you see that opens up the pores. When the weather gets warm, the whiskey soaks in. When the weather gets cool, it tightens up and shoots it back. American whiskeys will get 100% of the color, 60 to 70% of the flavor from that barrel. And again, Brown Foreman is the only major whiskey company that makes their own. So with Gentleman Jack, you have barrels found on the bottom floor of the barrel house. It only soaks a third of the way into the barrel. So the majority of what it's mingling with is that caramelized section, creating a sweeter profile. Also, by only soaking a third of the way into that barrel, it's only pulling a third of those tannins out. So it's lighter and it's softer. It's interesting enough to talk about. Let's, let's go ahead and take a nose and take a taste. Now, if you've never done a tasting before, the first thing that you're always going to want to do is look at the color. If you've ever been to a wine tasting, you treat your whiskey in the same way. Hold it up to a light and give it a nice swirl. We can talk legs, we can talk colors. Again, 100% of the color, 60 to 70% of the flavor from that barrel. And this has a gorgeous, gorgeous honey color to it a little bit lighter than some of them, obviously only soaking a third of the way into that barrel. This delicate, delicate leg. Go ahead and take a nose. You're going to want to hold it about this far away from your nose. Put it directly under your nose so that the aromatics can lift up. You don't want to get too close right off the bat because this is high proof alcohol. You can burn your palate and then miss a lot of the nuances. Don't worry. If for some reason that happens, sniff the back of your hand. Your own scent will neutralize your palate and allow you to get to more of those gorgeous, subtle notes. Hold it about this far beneath your nose. Open your mouth, purse your lips, and breathe in. As those aromatics cascade over your palate, you are going to actually taste it. Somewhere around 40 to 60% of what you taste is through your nose. Go ahead, take those deep breaths. Ah. Now, this is interesting. When you hold your whiskey about this far away from your nose and you breathe in, what you will get are the more feminine profiles. 
That's going to be fruit floral notes, baking spices, uh, the lighter aromatics. To get in deeper, you're going to get the heavier scents, the heavier aromatics, what we consider the masculine profile. Your leathers, your tobaccos, your heartier spices, your cloves. Let's go ahead and take a taste. Very delicate. Jack Daniels yeast strain notoriously gives off fruit floral notes. A lot of people will laugh and tell you uh, they get a banana profile. It's there. Whiskey has over 200 flavors. If you were to guess at some of the flavors, you would more than likely not be wrong. Let's go ahead and take another nose. Take another taste. the biggest thing is the profile, the flavors. They don't linger like a true gentleman. They show up, they say, how do you do? And they know exactly when to leave. Last sip. What do you get? Now, as I said before, Gentleman Jack is a bird of merit barrels from the bottom floor in Barrel House. Jack Daniels marriage barrels from every floor in the Barrel House. We want it to taste the same as it did back in the early 1900s as it does in 2021. So, and then we have Jack Daniels single barrel. Single barrel is exactly that. It represents the flavor profile of just one barrel. No two barrels taste the same. You see, every barrel has roughly 30 staves in it. Those are those pieces of wood that help uh, raise a barrel. Those 30 staves represent four different parts of the United States, tree farms throughout four different parts of the United States. You have different mineral content in the soil, different mineral content in the water. Bizarre statement, but no two trees taste the same. Cut to the cooperage. As the cooper raises a barrel, and you raise a barrel, you don't uh, build a barrel, you raise it like a baby, and it's done by a cooper in a cooperage. So. As the cooper raises that barrel, they get paid by volume. So they are moving as fast as they possibly can. Those staves can measure anywhere from, we're going to say about that wide to about that wide. With roughly 32, that could be anywhere from 28 to 36. So you can actually take the same juice from the same run, put it into two barrels side by side, age it the same amount of time, and they will not taste the same. Typically, a barrel will lean sweeter towards the corn, spicier towards the rye, or woody and tannic. Or it could be a combination of two or all three. That's the beautiful thing about a single barrel. You don't know specifically what you're getting, but you know it's going to be full-bodied and it's going to be fantastic. The first that we're going to taste is Jack Daniel's single barrel. That's the one with the black box, the dark label. What is Jack Daniel's single barrel? Again, it's exactly that. It's a single barrel where no two barrels taste the same. It's Jack Daniels from the top floor in the barrel house. Let's talk about these barrels. As we age whiskey in a barrel, a few things happen. This is where the flavor profiles are going to further their differentiation. When you put the whiskey in, the weather gets warm, the pores open up, whiskey soaks in. The weather gets cool, tightens up, shoots it back. 100% of the color, 60 to 70% of the flavor from that barrel. As it breathes in and out, you're going to have a certain level of evaporation. That's actually called the angel share. We lose a, a fraction of a percentage every year uh, due to that evaporation. Now what's leaving is actually water. It's the water molecule that finds its way out of that barrel. And as it evaporates, uh, you're going to have a reduction. I think it's 3 to 7% every year. Think about that. Name another business that's fine with losing 3 to 7% a year. You're going to have concentration. It's the water. It's not the alcohol. But you're also going to have oxidation. For those barrels that are found in uh, warmer spots in that barrel house, the sugars are going to start to break down. As it breathes, the sugars come in contact with oxygen, and they will get softer on your palate. 
It's not unlike putting red wine into a decanter or through one of those fancy oxidizers. So your barrel, with the concentration, will accentuate certain flavor profiles. And in certain instances, where it's in a warmer spot in the barrel house, it will actually get softer on your palate. Now, it is because of those differences that I cannot actually discuss with you what you are getting from your tasting. I have my single barrels. You have yours. Just to show you that we are not drinking the same thing, I'm going to pull my bottle for the uh, single barrel rye. On the necker here, you might be able to see it if I tilt it, we actually have the rick number and the barrel number. With that, if you're going out and you find yourself a single barrel that you enjoy, we're not the only ones that do single barrel, there's a few that are out there. If you find one that you enjoy, you're going to ask that bartender, can I please see the bottle? You're going to look at that number, and you're going to write down the Rick number, the barrel number. You're then going to ask him where they buy their liquor. You go to that liquor store, you find the bottle of single barrel, and hopefully they've got a good selection. Then you find that Rick number and that barrel number. If those numbers do not match, the flavor is going to be similar, but it will lean in a different direction. The bottles that you are sampling are from Northern Ohio. The bottles that I am sampling from were purchased down here in Central Ohio. So our bottles are likely not going to taste the same. I will walk you through what I'm getting off of mine though. The first of our single barrels that we're going to sample through is Jack Daniels Single Barrel, top floor in the barrel house. Again, we lose 3 to 7% uh, due to evaporation every year. Roughly the average age of a Jack Daniels is around 4 to 6 years. So you can see how that would concentrate. Believe it or not, I have seen personally barrels from the top floor in the barrel house that have 50% or less in them. Being a warmer spot, there was much more evaporation. It was more full bodied. Now, if you have a keen eye, you notice that I've changed glassware. This is an American whiskey glass. It has the larger tulip. Reason behind the larger tulip, the larger nose to it, American whiskeys are meant to be barrel forward, where Celtic whiskeys are meant to be grain forward. There's a lot of profile in this. Those hot summers are going to draw all those tannins out. So we want those alcohol fumes to be able to escape in a broader sense. That way those aromatics can spread out and we can get some of those more full-bodied notes. Drinking single barrels, we're taking those full-bodied whiskeys from the top floor in the barrel house, meaning we want it to spread out. It's going to be heavy on the nose. The Gentleman Jack, I used the Celtic whiskey glass. It has a narrower nose. Celtic whiskeys are meant to be grain forward, so this will concentrate the aromatics so you can get the more delicate notes out of it. Celtic, bourbon, North American whiskeys. Now let's take a look. If you notice the first thing right off the bat, it's darker. There's a lot more tannins to this. It has extracted a lot of those oils and a lot of those colors from that barrel. Let's take a nose. And right off the bat, you do not have to get close to this. This is pretty in your face. Let's go in deeper. Lots of spice on mine. And again, I'm only speaking to mine. It has spice. It has that familiar Jack Daniels tropical fruit notes, that banana notes there. A little bit of a uh, Confectioner's sugar, mascarpone. Let's take a taste. Okay. For me, mine is full body, but it's soft on the front. That means that it's from one of those warmer spots. Very approachable. The rye shows up in the back. Still definitely those fruit notes. Now I'm getting more of the cherry notes. One more. Wow. Tell me about yours. 
next whiskey we're drinking, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Rye. It's the one with the red label. In this instance, we are actually sampling through Rick number 19. Bottling April 2nd, 2019. Barrel number 1902391. What makes Jack Daniels Rye special? Let's talk about that. We do have two Jack Daniels ryes. We have what we call the core rye, and then we have the single barrel rye. As we know, single barrels represent the flavor profile of that one barrel. But rye in general. First off, did you know that rye is actually America's first whiskey? As the Scotch-Irish immigrants came to the United States, they landed up in New England, and uh, rye was the primary grain. And that's what they used to make all their whiskeys. That's where a lot of the old classic cocktails utilized rye. That and the fact that sweet, spicy, and bitter makes a balanced cocktail, and that allows you to have a couple more. So, they all started with the rye. Rye, let's talk about that as a flavor profile. When we talk about grains, we're going to talk about corn, rye, barley. Sometimes there's wheat. And I always tell people, think about bread. Seriously, bread. Cornbread, nice and sweet, gives you that sweeter profile. Rye bread, you think about that deli sandwich, has a nice spice to it. If it has wheat in it, it's going to be a little bit drier and a little bit creamy. And anything with malt, malted barley, has a nutty-like quality to it. So rye has the spice. The grain bill behind Jack Daniel's rye is 70% rye. 18% corn, and the rest is barley. What makes that special? Believe it or not, it's the very first recipe change at Jack Daniels in almost 150 years. Also, here's a couple things that st make us stand out. We make ours. Follow me on this. A few years back, our company came out with Woodford Rye. When Woodford Rye came out, I did a little comparative study. I took a list of all of the rye whiskeys that were available in Ohio. I took that list and I compared it to another list. That list was a list of products produced by MGP. In case you don't know, MGP is the old Seagram's plant in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. It's a grain company. They literally liquidate their assets. Right now, you could go online and order a train tanker full of whiskey, of rye, of bourbon. You put it into your own barrels, you age it for however long you want, you cut it to whatever proof you want, you put your own, put it in your own bottle with your own fancy label and call it your own. Roughly 35-40% to 40 of the ryes, when I did this study, were the same rye. By same rye, I mean they're the same rye. You see, the most predominant product that MGP sells is their rye, and it's their 95% rye. There's another thing. At 70% rye, that leaves more room for other grains to create more of a dialogue. At 95% rye, you're going to get this spice. Remember that rye bread? You're going to get this spicy punch, and then there's nothing left. It's like if I walked up to you, slugged you in the jaw, and then tried to have a conversation with you. There's not much dialogue. That's what 95% rye is. So with Jack Daniels rye, you're getting a lower percentage rye, more balanced. You're getting the first recipe change in over 150 years. You're also getting the power of our own barrels. You're getting that Jack Daniels fruit floral forward yeast strain. And you're also getting the power of charcoal mellowing. There are very few ryes that will actually drip through charcoal. At Jack Daniels, just like all other Jacks, we will take that rye and drip it through 10 feet of charcoal, leaving some of the more bitter notes from that rye grain behind, creating one of the smoothest, most enjoyable rye whiskeys in the market. All fun and games. Let's try it. For me, my rye, those fruit floral notes are coming forward. I'm getting some of the tropical fruit, but this time getting a little bit of the apple, kind of a pear. Some of those fruity notes, a little bit of the tropical. And then spice. Let's taste it. Oh, it's 
spice right up front. Black pepper. Started on the tip of my tongue, a bit of a tingle. And then as it proceeds, it goes through my throat. Now what I'm doing, I'm doing the Tennessee chew as I aerate my palate and those alcohols come off. Whiskey has over 200 flavors to it. They combine creating profiles. I'm getting some of the heartier, more masculine notes. A little bit of leather. How's yours? All right, last whiskey. Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. There's no hiding from this one. This is exactly that. It represents the flavor of one barrel. Top floor in the barrel house. And this is barrel proof. When they pull this, essentially, they put it through uh, a cheesecloth. They're, the only thing they're doing to this whiskey is taking the sediment out, putting it into the bottle. Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof can go anywhere from 125 to 140. And let me look here. It looks like we are looking at 136, 136 proof. That's got a little bit of a kick to it, now don't it? Go ahead and give it a try. This one is definitely the darkest of them. With my selections, this has the richest color. That means that it's soaked all the way into that barrel. It's soaked all the way in, pulling all those great notes through. Almost a mahogany color to it. On the note, ooh. That's got some proof. Aromatics just it will come up and take you, take your breath away. I'm sniffing my hand. There we go. As my palate acclimates, oddly enough, I'm getting warm baking spices. This one, with the intense alcohols, oddly enough. It's a little bit softer on the notes. Once you get past the alcohols, there are soft notes, warm notes. This reminds me of uh, old town villages. You go into the old historical villages, and then you go into the general store, and they have all the great spice mixes going on. Let's take a taste. Interesting. <laughs> with mine, <laughs> there's the proof. <laughs> it's soft on the palate. It's definitely from a hot spot in the barrel house. But it's got that higher proof. The spices. I'm getting the rye in the back of my throat, and then it just expands. Now, a lot of times people will talk about that... Uh, that's bold. That's, uh, there's a lot of different versions of that. That uh, it's spicy. There's a lot of different versions of that. And our definitions aren't the same. We, uh, we, we work on dialogue on that. With this one, I'm not getting the rye spice. The rye spice is the tingle on the tip of your tongue. With that, uh, and then the alcohol. That's the warming sensation. I'm getting the warming. I'm not getting the tingle on the tip of my tongue. I'm getting it back here in my throat. It shows it's been oxidized. It's from the top floor. This definitely makes me want fatty red meats. Obviously, if you're going to pair this, you want something hearty to pair up against, something with a richer profile. And with that, with that rye content, it would just cut right through that with that higher proof, and the fats would play back and forth. I'm curious, what's yours like? Ladies and gentlemen, that is your Jack Daniels, Gentleman Jack, and Single Barrel Tasting. Again, they call me Whiskey Pete. Thank you for enjoying this tasting with us. Keep coming back to Corkscrew. Great food, great location, great place to grab some whiskey and something to eat. Remember, be safe, wash your hands.